I'm going to go back now to my file manager and update my config file with that information because I've got to get that in my config file. So I click on blog, I go into my wp-config and I'm going to edit it and I'm going to enter the information here and I'm going to paste that password in that I copied. Okay, So there's my blog name, my username, and my password. Localhost should be the same uh, if uh, you're, the server you're moving to requires you to put something different in here. You may need to change that, but most of the time that's going to be the same. The character set of your database, UTF-8, since this is the config file from your old install, then that's most likely going to be correct. Uh, and then the prefix for the table. That's going to be the same if you don't change it since we dumped the database and this is the config file for the one that we used. So you just may want to double check and make sure these things are correct. Uh, you know, go to your control panel, um, go to your database, and just make sure your database is called herald04 blog underscore blog and the user is herald04 underscore blog1. And that's what I have here, herald04 underscore blog, herald04 underscore blog1, and I pasted that password in. So that's all correct. I'm just going to save that config file. Now the last thing that I need to do is make a few changes to my SQL file, my database dump, and then import it into the new site. So we're going to close or minimize uh, the web browser for a moment. Go to the desktop where you downloaded the SQL file and I'm going to open it with a text editor. Now you can use any text editor you want uh, to edit this with. You can use Notepad or, or whatever you have. I like Edit Plus here. If you just uh, Google Edit Plus, it's a really neat text editor and that's what I'm using. So let's go through and look at some entries here. If we scroll down and look, Site URL in here. My database dump is going to show uh, the web address in lots of different places in this SQL file for my old site. So there's edgychalk.org slash blog here. There's edgychalk.org slash blog here for the home. This is in my options table. If I were to scroll down and look in the content, lots of different places in the content, uh, you're going to see your web address. So there's edgychalk.org slash blog page 32 edgychalk.org slash blog here. So it's going to be all over the place uh, in your content, that old web address. edgychalk.org page 17, edgychalk.org slash blog question mark page ID 2. Those URLs are everywhere, so we've got to get all those things changed. Uh, fortunately, it's quite easy to do that. All you need to do is a search and replace. I'm going to replace here every place that has edgychalk.org, I'm going to replace it with heraldleader.org because that's my new web address. And since I'm leaving the blog in the same subdirectory on the new site, I'm leaving it the same name, my old site, remember, the blog was in edgychalk.org slash blog. In my new site, I left that directory, subdirectory called blog. So that's going to be the same. I don't need to worry about changing that subdirectory name in here anywhere. That's one thing you need to think about. If you change the subdirectory name on the new site, then you may need to do two search and replaces. But I've not changed it, so I only need to do one. Uh, so we're going to change all instances of edgychalk.org in this database to heraldleader.org. I'm going to move this down here just to show you because this isn't really a big site that I'm using, but just to show you how many times this is scattered throughout the database, even on a very small site. If you look in the bar down here, once I click Replace All, 540 occurrences have been changed just in this very small database. So if you don't do that, then you end up having all kinds of problems in your new install with permalinks and all kinds of stuff. Now if I scroll down and look at uh, some of those again, I'll see that they've all been updated. There, heraldleader.org slash blog now. 
for the site URL, uh, hairleader.org slash blog for home. And here, hairleader.org slash blog, page 32. So you see they've all been changed. Okay. Now, again, if my old site well, had it been edutalk.org slash blog, and my new site I'm moving it to, if it was hairleader.org and I wanted to put it in root, or I had a new name, it was going to be now slash blog4, then I would need to do some additional search and replaces. And you just need to use some logic and sort of common sense to figure that out. What URL are you moving from specifically? And what URL are you placing this into to do those search and replaces to make sure you get all your URLs uh, changed properly in the database? And then you could, if you wanted while you were here, go down and change emails. Uh, I have an email address here at KentuckyClassroom.com, for example. Uh, if I wanted to change those email addresses, I could do search and replaces to change those as well. Save my SQL file with my changes. And then go to my control panel. And the last thing that we need to do then is go to PHP My Admin. Select the database that I created. It was called Blog. It's empty. So now I'm going to import this SQL file. So I click Import, Browse, find my SQL. Make sure your character set is the same as the database that you exported. Now, if you have a reasonably sized database, uh, this should import fine. If you have a large database, a large SQL file, then you may have some trouble importing it here through phpMyAdmin, depending on the host that you're on. Uh, some hosts have the max execution set very low, so it'll time out on you before it gets imported. Uh, and this is set by default to allow about a 5 megabyte upload. So if you have a large database, then uh, you may have to use a, a different technique to get your SQL file imported. Uh, I'll make a future video to show you how to do that to import large databases. Uh, I've imported them as big as 500 megabyte before uh, just using a, a technique to, that allows you to do staggered imports. Uh, but that's beyond the scope of this video and I'll make a future one to show you how to do that if you uh, do have a very large database and have problems with it timing out before it gets imported. Okay, so now my tables have imported. Now you should have the same number of tables in your new site that you had in your old site. If I click on it, there they are. Uh, it's all populated. Everything looks good. Okay, so now I should be able to go to my new site. And if I did everything correctly, we should see our blog just like we do on our old site. I should be able to click on links and it should stay on hairleader.org. Everything should work fine. Uh, everything should be there. All my comments are there. Even my uh, uh, support form, my uh, simple press support form that I put in here should be there with everything in it just the way that it was. Uh, and uh, so you ha should have an exact replica of your site at the new location. <clears throat> you know, should be able to log in with using the same username and password that you do on your old site. Uh, when you log in, just keep an eye and make sure that you're stored your new site because if you happen to miss a link and you click on it, it could be taking you to your old site if it's still online. Uh, so just click around, explore, make sure everything is the way that it should be. Uh, I should even be able to uh, go to my settings and with that search and replace in the database, I'll see here that hairleader.org is my blog address and WordPress address and I should even be able to go to my permalinks and see that all my permalinks were changed to my new address. Now if you have a custom structure on your old site then you might have to come here and look and, and uh, make sure that's uh, set up properly if you didn't do the search and replace on that in the database. But uh, if you follow that process that I describe here uh, it's always worked for me to be able to move blogs uh, from one site to another and to even make a copy of a blog if you wanted to, a duplicate in an existing site. You can use the, really the same process. So hopefully this helps to explain how to uh, take a blog that you have and move it from one server, one web address to another uh, server and web address.